Hey y'all, it's Jed and I'm here with Alex from Mulholland Harley Davidson and today we're going to do a sort of a quick demo review ride of a really cool bike. That is a 2023 Harley Davidson Heritage Classic in Atlas Silver with the Milwaukee 8 114. Alex, tell us about this bike. So this is 2023 Heritage Classic in the Atlas Silver Metallic finish with the chrome finishing and the trim. Um, on this bike, you're going to be getting the soft tail chassis with that internal adjustable mono shock in the rear. Five gallon fuel tank up front, 114 Milwaukee 8 is the second most powerful motor that Harley Davidson makes. You are also getting four boards that are floating just like on your big touring bikes. That allows you to kill a little bit more of that road vibration as well as a full-size uh, rear brake paddle. Uh, you also get cruise control as standard, as well as fog lights, as well as a detachable windshield. So it adds a little bit more versatility to the cruiser touring element of this bike. Heritage coming in, it's the top line soft tail model. Um, anything above this, you're gonna be going up to those touring bikes with the Road King Special and the Road Ride and Street Vibes. You also are getting lockable, leather-wrapped hard bags for added security. So it's not just a soft leather bag that anyone can break into. You have a lock that operates with your key that you also lock the forks with as well. Both keys on both sides, they are removable. Standard two-up seating, partly is gone with they've had it on the carriages for a while, the pleated seats as well as the pleated bag. So all the leather trim has this nice pleating on the sides of it just to add a little bit more to that classic style. Spoke rims, tubeless spoke rims. So that's something that Harley's doing now. I was going to ask you yeah. about that. They, yeah. They've got sort of a ridge in the center that exactly. the spokes are in. Yeah. So that's cool. Harley's been doing this for a little while. Obviously the one issue with having a spoke wheel is that it uh, requires the tube, but Harley's been able to circumvent that and now they have tubeless spoke rims, so that allows you to still have that great style without having to worry about breaking a tube and replacing that and adding that extra maintenance. Yeah, and the way they did it, um, you know, it still has a sort of a old school classic look, the way they, the way they got those spokes into the rim. You know, the BMW uh, GS bikes and the new Pan Americas from Harley also have tubeless, uh, the spokes, spokes but they're exactly. they're a more modern look exactly these these retain that classic yeah, yeah the whole point of the heritage classic model is going back to that old school style you get the full fender in the front and rear that stretches all the way around you have the beautiful blue pinstriping that's included in this paint as well as uh, uh four piston brakes in the front with the abs as well as abs in the rear that is standard on all two of 2023 Harley models now. Traction control or no on this? No traction control. Uh, the only, uh, the bike soft tail models with traction control are the low rider models. Those are, they start implementing it. Uh, hopefully soon they'll begin implementing those into other models as well. And again, coming back into the rear, you have that full fender design going all the way around, really completing that classic look, as well as a unique uh, exhaust system for this bike. So the uh, mufflers kind of go really back to that old school Harley design. This is something that they've been doing for a long time with that staggered exhaust. All the new soft tail models have a even cut exhaust and the heritage model, they elected to continue that kind of staggered looking exhaust system from the older Harleys. Standard two up seating, as well as your speedometer, which is built on top of the gas tank. This is, uh, they did this to allow keeping in a classic look while uh, maintaining functionality and versatility. So you have your speedometer going around here, fuel gauge that's always on, and then using your selector switch up here, you can go through the menu with your trips, your fuel range, the time, as well as your RPM. Coming down here, you have your basic indicator lights, right and left turn signals, your high beams, neutral, and your oil pressure light. And you also have the fog lights on here. That's operated with this button right here. And that it's indicated on the uh, speedometer right there. You also have a continuing that leather design. You have a leather trim piece up here, again, with those pink leather bolts on top of here. And uh, 
these rims are what size, do you know? Uh, I believe, check you right now. So it is a 16 in the front and rear. 16 in the front and rear. And I yep. imagine that's a real forgiving ride because you got all that sidewall. That's exactly. And a big fat tire in the front and the rear. And then for, for sort of, um, you know, newer folks to Harley, this is a soft tail and that's carrying on a long tradition of soft tails. What that means in, in the case of a modern soft tail is a, is a mono shock in the rear that's hidden um, in the old days. And I'm talking about, I guess, 84 uh, and on. The soft tail was invented and it, yep. it was sort of two smaller hidden Yes, exactly. Hidden so shocks. with the new design on the soft tail line, you have that uh, floating swing arm. The old style, uh, that swing arm was, the shocks were actually laying parallel and flat to the ground. So the bottom of the bike was here and those shocks were actually going uh, horizontal on the bottom of the bike. So it did have that soft tail design, but there were still some left to be desired. Limited. In terms of, in terms of suspension travel, yeah. in terms of adjustability, in terms of rebounding compression. Yeah. So on the new models, Harley went over to a uh, 45 degree angle uh, internal shot that's underneath the seat that bolts directly to the swing arm on the frame. This bolt right here. This is the, that's hot. Um, <laughs> That is the uh, top of the shock bolt. So that is where the shock actually connects into the frame and then it goes all the way down to the back of the swing arm. That allows for one, more adjustability, more comfort, more higher performance and better uh, in handling in the corners. Um, they took that design from you know, a lot of sport bikes. They all have a 45 degree angle, 50 degree angle rear shock in the rear. This mimics that and it allows for a lot more adjustability, better performance, better handling, and also better safety. I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this frame at least is your your frame of choice yes. on your personal ride. Yes. I can say with experience having ridden now probably half a dozen of these Milwaukee 8 yeah. uh, soft tails, it's a great, it really is. great design. It is, frankly, I think more comfortable than uh, what I get on my on my Road Glide ST, which is just a you know, conventional dual shock in the rear, it's it's something special. If you haven't if you haven't tried one, yeah, I'd and say, it, and it adds more uh, in terms of you know Harley was you know back in the day they were just known as kind of a slow cruiser, and you know with the emergence of performance bagger, Dyna, performance dynasty, Harley started to want to embrace that. And this uh, frame design and rear shock design allows you to have a lot higher performance. With the traditional rear shock design, the biggest issue is the uh, oscillation between the two shocks, right? So one sh you might hit a bump on one side of the tire, and that one left shock and that one right shock might go a little bit higher, and the tire starts jittering. Yeah. And it, you don't, you're not as stable at higher speeds. So with this mono shock design, you know, again, coming from sport bikes, coming from a lot of other motorcycles out there, you know, Japan and Europe, um, that is, they use that for a reason because it's very stable at speed, it's very comfortable, and it adds a lot, a lot of versatility. I have a street bob myself, and that frame and that chassis from the factory is a great cruiser bike, it's a great performance bike, something you can rip around in the canyons and feel very confident pushing it on its own. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Well, Alex, thank you. Of course. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. I know our viewers do. And uh, let's get this thing on the road and uh, see what it feels like. Right on, man. Let's All do right. it. All right. Okay, y'all. This is a 2023 Harley Davidson Heritage Classic in Atlas Silver got the 114 and it ought to be an interesting ride I, my theory on this bike is that it may be kind of a sweet spot in the Harley lineup and the reason I say that is it's the soft tail frame the soft tail platform but it's got kind of FL style 
front forks and if you're unfamiliar with Harley vernacular FL is uh, shorthand for touring so these are sort of touring style forks I don't know the rake on them but they feel like a real short rake and um, this bike ends up feeling really light it's not a light bike I mean it's I think it's about 600 pounds again we'll uh, try to put the specs up on screen for you um, there's a top up ahead on the right um, but anyway um, notwithstanding a 600 pound weight I just came off of my road glide and this feels really light in comparison so um, it, 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 it could serve a nice niche for somebody who wants to do some touring wants some you know a big fat front wheel and tire fat front forks but this newer soft tail frame that's got the monoshock in the rear it is um, handling the road nicely I, I would say in comparison to my road glide I'm surprised it actually feels a lot more plush than the suspension does on my road glide which is interesting this 114 feels it's got nice low-end torque I'm told low-end on the 114 actually um, is slightly better than the 117 Milwaukee 8 and uh, I guess I believe it these handlebars first of all this is a bone stock bike uh, I'm riding it um, because of the courtesy and friendship of, Mul of uh, Mulholland Harley-Davidson this is right off the show showroom floor I think it's got 30 miles on it so it's bone stock uh, this stock setup with these bars is actually pretty nice they're in a a nice there's they're mini apes and they're in a nice uh, position for a really comfortable posture these um these foot controls are similar uh, to what's on a Harley Touring bike. Um, I can't tell. Yeah, I would say they're they're set up very similar, if not exactly the same as what's on my Rogue Glide in terms of how far forward they are. These floorboards are a little different than mine. Um, you know, I, I've I've reviewed both the Lowrider S and the Lowrider ST that come with a 117 from the factory, um, and I've raved about those bikes. Initial ride on this is it's really nice too. It's um, it's the 114 as opposed to the 117, um, but I'm not feeling a huge difference. And uh, it's um, it's only got one brake in the front as opposed to two on both of those bikes. But I'm not really feeling a lack of front braking. I suppose on a track maybe, but on on this bike it feels absolutely fine. You know, if if you wanted a bike that you could have some fun you know aggressively around town or in the canyons it's not gonna not gonna win any races but it'd be a fun bike to have uh, and you could do some light touring on it we're at our midpoint you just have to do something or you just go back oh i'm good uh do you want to take the highway back Whatever, as long as you're willing to be out, I'm good. But okay. yeah, we can take the highway back if you want to get some highway. Footage. Okay, cool. So, so 
let's see how it feels in the Yui. Maybe not as nimble as the FL. So maybe it is a little more raked. I felt it there. But we'll have to see. Alex is on a um, looks like a CBO street glide of some sort. I think we're going to get a chance to get on the highway and we'll feel this there. <clears throat> I believe it comes with this detachable windscreen which is doing a nice job keeping the wind off me and we'll feel we'll get an even better sense on the highway. Real pretty bike. The Heritage Classic has been in the Harley lineup forever. I know there were Heritage's, Heritage Softtails back in the Evo days in the uh, late 80s and, and 90s. Same basic look, obviously different frame beginning in uh, 2018 when the Milwaukee 8 arrived, I guess 2017. 2017? No, 20. 2017 or 2018 when the Milwaukee 8 arrived along with these newly designed soft tail frames. It's a real friendly bike. Um, I think because it's got this fat front wheel and tire, it's forgiving over uh, road conditions, bad road conditions. And this posture is real neutral, so you don't have a real aggressive stance. Let's see how it is in this on ramp. CBO. And I'm getting a tiny bit of little wobble there with grooves in the road, which I'm not liking. Um, I'm surprised actually at that. I did not like the way that felt. I'm not sure whether that's these tires or maybe even how squishy this seat is, but uh, did not feel great. where yeah I am feeling the ones uh, the 114 as uh, a little weaker than the 117 it's the first time I've been able to experience it um, just at full throttle or close to full throttle there on the freeway um, going back to this windscreen it is doing a great job of keeping wind off me it's nice and quiet behind it. I've got no buffeting on my head. be a really nice way to, to knock out some miles. Alex is a much more aggressive demo rider than uh, some of the others I've been on and I appreciate it. He's the no-nonsense uh, leader of the pack of two. I've got the day off today. It's Juneteenth and my company was nice enough to give us a day off. If you're unfamiliar with Juneteenth, it's a celebration of the day that slaves in the state of Texas were finally informed of their freedom many months after the Emancipation Proclamation when uh, news finally arrived 
to the shores of Texas. And uh, I grew up in Texas, and so I'm, I'm well aware of the holiday, and we, we certainly learned about it in Texas history. But I think the rest of the country is just becoming familiar with it in the last few years. And I think it's great uh, that my company uh, decided to make it a holiday. And I am uh, using it to do what I enjoy, which is riding motorcycles. So we're, we're close to the end of this quick uh, demo ride and I come to the question would I own it um, personally no I think I would prefer uh, a lowrider s to this bike um, because it serves a purpose for me and it I think probably stickers at a similar point by the way I, I would prefer a lowrider ST to a lowrider s again because that fairing serves a purpose for me uh, and you get the 117 with that bike but there's something about I don't know if it's both tires or just this front tire that and maybe it's just because it's uh, brand new but I was feeling it kind of catching grooves on the freeway and that's an unsettling feeling I have to check on that this is one of the most comfortable stock Harley seats I think I've experienced. The Jed's butt has experienced. I'm jealous of this suspension. And you know, everybody's talking about those new CVO road glides and street glides, which have an impressive looking front fork. It's an inverted fork. Um, but they stuck with the sort of conventional rear suspension when they could have gone with a, a new frame you know with a mono shock like the like the soft tails have hey check out this electroglide highway king in hi-fi magenta and birch white this is uh, a really pretty bike limited edition on the showroom floor in Mulholland Harley Davidson. I imagine it is for sale at the right price if you want one. Uh, it's a gorgeous bike. You gotta stop by and take a look if you have a chance.